Um, welcome to Liverpool John Moores University, or LJMU as we affectionately term it. The university has been a university since 92, and before that it started off as a mechanics institute back in the 1800s. Uh, without wanting to give you a history lesson, it's, it's quite a sprawling university. I think we've got about 35 buildings across the city and 25,000 students and 3,500 staff. And the Redmond's building that you're in today is our newest building. Um, uh, great views from the top. And if you look out on, from the balcony, you can see our next newest building, which is the old Royal Mail sorting office to the right as you look out. Uh, which is our, our £160 million capital project to be delivered in 2018. So as you come back out of the back of Lime Street, you'll be able to walk straight into, into that new building. So it's great to have you all here. I remember making the offer at IWMW at Edgehill last year. And, uh, and I'd just like to say thanks to Dom. Do you want to stand up, Dom? Because he's done all the work organising this on our behalf and Alan and Janine and Rebecca who's on the on the desk upstairs um, and if you need anything just shout. Okay, many thanks. Welcome to IWMW 2016. Welcome to the 20th IWMW event. Welcome to Liverpool John Moores University and I'm particularly pleased to be back in my hometown. It's gear isn't it? Okay, so, welcome to Liverpool. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brian Kelly, and I am founder of the IWMW series all those many years ago. It's the Institutional Web Management Workshop series, founded by myself in my first year at UConn at the University of Bath, and it was launched at King's College London in July 1997. Was anybody at that event? Just me, showing my age. <laughs> And it's now an established three-day event, which was relaunched in 2014 after the cessation of UConn funding. So this is a um, uh, 20th in the series. For those of you who are new to it, we have a combination of the plenary talks in this lecture theatre, some panel session, a panel session also in this lecture theatre, and a number of parallel workshop sessions this afternoon, and masterclasses tomorrow afternoon. And this event is also an amplified event. So hello to everybody who may be watching this live video stream or watching a recording of this talk later on. So just to clarify the rights, you are free to record this talk, to take photos and to tweet and blog and share your thoughts with your peers and the wider community. And in order to facilitate such sharing, there is an event hashtag, hash IWMW16. And if you use that in combination with, say, one of the plenary talks, this is hash P0, or hash A1 to A9 for the workshops, and similarly for the masterclasses, um, that makes it easy for people to look at the Twitter stream later on and make some sense of the discussions that were, were taking place. There is an official communications app called Hoover. Who has signed up and used the Hoover app? Okay, oh, well over half, two-thirds of the audience. So that will be used, uh, the, t the timetable and the rooms for the sessions are on that app. It can also be used for uh, comms to making contacts with people and also a number of us can send out a broadcast message. So something you may find is that tomorrow we send an announcement to say there's free beer down one of the bars down the Albert Dock. So there's motivation for you to use that. But also if there's lost property or any, any problems, we will be using that for the instant communications. Um, also, in the run-up to this event, I launched the IWMW blog. And this was intended initially for people to look back and reflect at the things that have happened over that long period of 20 years. There have been 31 guest posts published so far, and maybe we should look at how this communal blog might be used after the event for sharing um, across the community. So a number of people uh, in the audience will have uh, contributed to that, to that post, and Rather than me looking back at the past, I'd just like to come up with some of the comments from the contributors 
to the, uh, to the blog. Um, Lorcan Dempsey was the man who appointed me at UConn. And in my first year, he says, Brian, I think we should have an event. You should organize an event for university web managers. And I was out really apprehensive. I've never organized an event before. I don't know what we'll do, you know. It was actually quite scary. But it worked, built on it. And then it got better when my former colleague Marika was co-chair and did an awful lot to help continue and sustain that event. And in Lorcan's blog post, uh, he described how the event was instrumental in successfully building a community around shared questions and directions. And really, that is what this event is about. Shared directions. What should we be doing? And shared questions. And how should we be doing it? And over the next three days, you'll be hearing plenary speakers, workshop facilitators, but most importantly, yourselves will be asking variants of those two questions. Gareth, has Gareth arrived yet? Hi, Gareth. I, I'll, I'll appreciate it if you fall asleep during the talk, because you got up at five this morning, was it? Half four. Half four. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so Gareth contributed to this and was say, for me, it's more than a conference, it's a community, and it's a privilege to be a part of, of the community. And I think that's something those of us who have been part of this community for several years will appreciate what Gareth is saying there. And then... Ian St. John, is Ian around? Ian, hi Ian. Um, more, it's more than a community. So the institutional web, it's not a race. We're not looking to be, have the best website because all our universities are very different. Very different levels of funding and size and size of the web teams. Ian's in a web team of one and is running a, a web team. Well, apparently, internal communications isn't a problem in the web team of one. Um, so we don't want to necessarily be the best, but we want to achieve our own personal best. So just as Ian does this when he does his marathon running and his, his running, we will be looking to achieve our own personal best in a professional sense. So Ian commented in 2006, um, he had no idea what IWMW was, but I think one of the sponsors mentioned this, uh, and he came along and 10 years later, Ian feels that IWMW is about the people you meet and network with on the social night, nights and who become your friends. And I think that's important. It's about professional networking, but it's also about developing, you know, possibly friendships and support. So we all suffer difficult times, moan about our, our work, our colleagues, our senior managers and the like. But there are also those challenging personal issues in our lives. A number of people have been made redundant or their institution has been downsized. And it's good to be able to talk to one's peers about those type of issues. So it is more than just a community. Rob Bristow, who's now working for JISC, describes he, 1999, he attended his first IWMW event, really enjoyed it, went to a couple more, but then was not able to go to a, a number of the events um, in the mid-2000s, and he said, he really felt that loss of the stimulus and refreshment of knowledge and interest. I felt like I missed the start of the whole Web 2.0 thing as a result. I think it was 2006 when there was a whole buzz about Web 2.0. What should we be doing? Is it a threat? Should we be blocking it? Should we be encouraging it? Those type of things. And it was within this type of forum we had those opportunities to have such conversations. So this year's content might have creeped up to about uh, 30 speakers. The theme, understanding users, managing change, and delivering services, was agreed. We had a, a regular Slack uh, conference calls uh, Friday afternoons, so the various advisory group members, and we came up with that theme. So thank you to all of those people for the ideas and sharing. And so I'd like to apply that first team, understanding users, to my user community, which is you guys, and the people who are at the office watching this. So what do IWMW attendees want? Well, I analyze the feedback from last year's event. Partly it might be, well, just continue as before. 100% of the respondents felt the content was very good or excellent. So thanks for all the speakers and contributors who helped achieve that. They enjoyed the relevant case studies. It was relevant for people. It was advice that was implementable. 
opportunities to discuss with one's peers was really important. And then people, they often say this, it would be nice to go to the other parallel sessions as well. You're in one, but I want to go to those other ones. Why don't those people running those other parallel sessions keep on repeating them so I can go to them all? Or more IW, uh, IWMW events held throughout the year? Well, I thought about that. What do we do? Um, but also, there were the questions about we want some inspirational speakers. But we also want some new speakers, the opportunity for people who may be new to the community to contribute to the community. So those were, were all the, the factors. But attending the multiple parallel sessions, well, facilitators can share their slides, share the other resources there. But the attendees can also help by tweeting about what's going on, by publishing reports about the sessions and making those publicly available afterwards, maybe on the IWMW blog. So there are ways in which we can enhance the learning which otherwise might be trapped in a parallel session. And then more IWMW events. Well, uh, uh, Duncan Ireland is facilitating a masterclass tomorrow on IWMW in miniature. And that will be saying, can we have a framework for building this type of events and sharing on a regional basis? So I think there might be still some places on Duncan's session. So Duncan, if you can give people a wave, grab hold of Duncan um, about that. About you, it's now 139 registered delegates. Um, has the person from Abate arrived yet? Hi, who rang me up at two o'clock yesterday afternoon and says, I want to come, it's really great. <laughs> so that, that's really good. Um, 139 registered delegates. Th hands up if you're a first timer. Right, that should be about 37% of the audience. It's really great, those new people uh, coming along. Hang up, hands up if you're female. So that should be about okay, okay. That should be about 30% of, of of the audience, and about 21% um, are speakers or, or facilitators. So um, the uh, let me say there are eight of us who've been to 11 or more of the events, eight, and eight female speakers. We've been trying to be proactive and encourage um, female members of the community to have a profile at these events. And I looked at, the, at all 20 events, so it's been 621 speakers at all events and uh, 300 speakers and 342 speakers, individual speakers at the event. So that's just a bit of a profiling about, this is our community. Kind of interesting that, so many of you might be featured in that Google spreadsheet. You can go and have a look and check, I've got the figures right. And the other thing we got on the feedback from last year, I asked the delegates, what did you think about the commercial involvement in this year's events, more than previous years, and the sponsorship? And the response was, oh, it's fine. You know, it was really good, as long as they don't, it's not just the salespeople, but they've got some, to, some good talks yesterday, uh, uh, last year. And then I asked the, uh, the sponsors what they thought, and they thought it was great to meet people, but we feel we could offer more than just... Uh, being on a desk and giving some pens, even when the great pens, there are some great pens out there. We feel we can actually share our expertise with the community. So this year we have a couple of plenary talks from the sponsors and uh, a number of uh, workshop, a number of parallel sessions from the sponsors as well. And we're hoping that that will continue. We feel we've got a really good dynamic going between uh, the uh, UK HE web community and the, and the vendor community. So use this opportunity to talk to the, to the sponsors, visit the exhibition, and learn from their sessions. But rather than listen to me, some of you, oops, some of you may know this guy. Hello, Brian, and hello to everybody at IWMW 2016. So this is the 20th year of IWMW, and that just blows my mind. When IWMW started, most people hadn't even heard of email, let alone the web. Not only didn't the iPhone exist, but even the first iPod wasn't going to be released for another five years. Netscape Navigator was the browser of choice for most people, and Internet Explorer 1 had only just been released. It was a much simpler time, wasn't it, really? And I kind of miss it. A time without the complications of things like responsive design or even pesky things like CSS. Wasn't the world so much simpler when we all built things in front page and table-based design? Ah, oh, for the good old days. 
Anyway, enough of the past. For many of you, this is your first time at IWMW and I want to welcome you on behalf of all of us veterans. I also wanted to share with you a few tips to make sure you get the most out of this very unique event. First of all, if you work for a commercial organization, be warned. These university types are always ready to fleece you for every penny you're worth. Expect to be picking up the tab at the bar for most of the event. Second, if you work at a university, make sure you fleece those commercial people. They're absolutely desperate for your work and so make sure you take advantage of them. Third, make sure you say hello to Brian who runs these events. He's a great guy with years of experience. But you need to be careful. Don't get onto the subject of real ale unless you have several hours to waste. And if he mentions swords or dancing, make sure you make your excuses and leave promptly. Finally, Make sure you take part in the most important activity of IWMW, the heart and soul of the event. Make sure that you take the time to get drunk with colleagues from other institutions and bitch and moan about how shit your job is. Nothing is more therapeutic than discovering that every institution in the sector is just as screwed up as yours. So, thanks for coming and have an amazing time at this 20th IWMW. I'm just sorry that I can't be there with you. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> so Paul's actually a sponsor of this event, so he's given me some money to dole out to you guys. So what I'd like to do now is spend some of Paul's money. So there will, there will be various prizes available. And so the first prize will be a contributor to the IWMW blog. So if I go to the randomizer tool and I've uh, pasted the people here, so I may have spammed many of you say, would you like to write something? If you t decline that opportunity, well, you've missed this opportunity. So this is a, a random name. Some people won't be physically present. Um, Helen Sorgan. Oh, bugger. Sorry, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect that. Oh, that's amazing. That wasn't uh, a r arranged an event. Helen is uh, a real star, has um, attended a vast, a vast large number of these events. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here, um, but she's written a blog post with her memories of the events on the IWNW blog, and I would really strongly uh, recommend that you uh, read that blog post and maybe contribute to her Just Giving account, which mentioned in the, in the final uh, paragraph. So I'll make sure I send something to Helen. Um, so that was the, the first prize. The, uh, the second prize um, goes to uh, a first timer at IWMW events. So if I can just go through to the spreadsheet of they were the guest bloggers. It should be a roll of the drums here. Emma Cottle, is Emma here? Ah, right. So what would you like? Would you like we have the um, <laughs> We have the branded USB 3 memory sticks with the really nice cool logo on it. This will be really valuable in five, 25th anniversary, say you've got, there's only 25 of these. Or the t-shirt, the IWMW t-shirt with the, which would you like, Emma? Well, it would have to be the USB. The USB, <laughs> USB. <laughs> I'm sorry, come down and grab me afterwards. No, that one's yours. And Finally, so each of the session chairs will be giving out various prizes, but I, I'm first and I get three. And one of the, 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 the prizes will be to somebody who's contributed to the event in some special way, some unsolicited way. And so it was somebody who sent me a, an email a month or so ago and says, Brian, IWM is really great, but I think it could do with a, a new logo. And I hope you don't mind, but I've produced this new logo. What do you think? If you don't like it, that, that's fine. So, Stephen? Where's Stephen Ashurst? There you go, there you go. <laughs> so, round of applause for Stephen. For the... <laughs> <laughs>